Hey there and welcome back to the channel. This really isn't an in-depth tutorial, however, when first starting with Authentic, it may seem daunting, especially with the terminology used. That's why in this video, in collaboration with Authentic Security, I'll try to explain some of the more major terms like flows and stages. So what are flows and stages? Well, in the context of Authentic, flows are an ordered sequence of stages. These flows can be used to define how a user authenticates, enrolls, etc. A stage represents a single verification or logic step. They are used to authenticate users, enroll users, and more. These stages can optionally be applied to a flow via policies. And at a base level, a policy is a yes-no gate. It will either evaluate to true or false depending on the policy kind and settings. For example, a group membership policy evaluates to true if the user is a member of a specified group and false if not. This can be used to conditionally apply stages grant, deny access to various objects, and for other custom logic. And to break this down as a high-level overview, think of a flow as a goal to be accomplished, and the stages as the procedures or ordered tasks to achieve that goal. Let me draw this out for a visual reference. So let's talk flows and stages. I'll quickly cover the user interaction, the flow's composition, the ordering of stages, and what happens when the goal of the flow is achieved. Okay, so let me add my user's icon. Next, I will draw out this box to represent authentic. Inside this box, I'll add a parallelogram to represent a flow. And this flow will be about an authentication flow where the goal is to be authenticated. Now, I'll use some ovals to represent the stages that make up this flow. At BASIC, for authentication, we need three stages. In the first stage, the user will need to identify themselves. Once their entry matches an existing user, the next stage encountered will be the password stage, where a valid password must be entered before being able to move on. And finally, with a successful password, the user will be permitted to the login stage. Once these stages are satisfied, the flow's goal is achieved, and the services Authentic is protecting can then be accessed. I'll represent the collection of microservices with this large rectangle and these smaller boxes as the different services. Let's recap and follow this through. The users will log into Authentic and be prompted by the identification stage, which is the first stage in the flow because of its lower order number of 10. Then the next stage will be the password stage with the next highest order number of 20. And with the correct password entered, the final stage based on the order number of 30 is the login stage, achieving the flow's goal and proceeding to the app dashboard or specific service. Let's say we want to be fancy and customize the authentication flow with policies to make it behave differently. For example, let's add an extra stage for multi-factor authentication and bind it to a policy. In this example, I'll create another oval for the additional stage label it multi-factor auth with an order number of 25. I'll remove this last flow line here and create a circle to represent my policy, which I'll label IP match policy. Now, let me just connect everything with flow lines and label my true and false decision lines as yes and no. Now let's walk through the new changes. Our users will come upon authentic greeted with the first stage to identify themselves, again since 10 is the lowest order number. Then they'd move on to the password stage at order number 20. Next, the user will be evaluated by the IP match policy. Let's say it's set up to match local IP addresses. A no to matching local IP addresses causes users to be prompted with multi-factor authentication, since this stage is order number 25, which is between the order numbers for the password stage and login stage. Once MFA is passed, the users end at the login stage. If instead the user's IP address was a yes to matching local IP addresses, then multi-factor authentication would be bypassed. However the login stage is successfully reached, the user is now authenticated for the resources behind Authentic. Let's jump into Authentic and apply these concepts to create a very basic authentication login flow. So first, navigate to your Authentic instance and log in with your administrator account. Then click on Admin Interface.
from here you want to go ahead and click on flows and stages to expand it and click on flows. Now let's go ahead and click on create and give your authentication flow a name. So I will go ahead and name mine super duper authentication and the same for the title and for your designation change it to authentication. For authentication you want to go ahead and leave this as no requirement because that's what this flow is for. Expand your behavior settings and go ahead and click the compatibility mode if you plan to have password managers work with this. Scroll down a little bit further and you can click and expand appearance settings and change this to your preference and click on create. Now from here go ahead and find the flow you just created and click on it and click on stage bindings. Now what we want to go ahead and do here is click on bind existing stage and for stage you want to go ahead and choose an identification stage so I'll go ahead and pick the default authentication identification next go ahead and give it an order number I like multiples of 10 so I'll go ahead and enter 10 here and the reason we want to give this an order number is because this is the ordered number that the stages will be processed so from low to high and click create. So now what this first stage does is prompt the user to enter their username basically to identify themselves to the interface. So now we'll need to prompt them for a password so click on bind existing stage and now for stage we want to go ahead and find the password stage. So here are the password stages. I'll go ahead and choose the default authentication password. And now we want to increase the order number. So from here, I'll go ahead and enter 20 and click on create. So now that we have these two stages, the first stage will ask the user to identify themselves and then it'll ask for the password. Now we need to bind another stage for the actual login. So click on bind existing stage, click on stage and look for the login. and I'll go ahead and choose the default authentication login and again I'll go ahead and increase my order number to 30 and click create so now we have the very basic requirements for an authentication flow from here you can customize your authentication flow even further by adding multi-factor authentication stages or a captcha stage you'd first want to figure out where in the flow you'd want to add these additional stages and then from there you can bind policies to determine whether or not that these additional stages would be applied to the user or not. For example, we'll pretend this password stage is a multi-factor authentication stage. To apply a policy, you would click the arrow to expand it and click on create and bind policy if you plan on creating a policy or click on bind existing policy if there's a policy that already exists that you'd like to use. And with that, I hope you found this video explaining the basics of flows and stages helpful. If so, please hit that like button and subscribe. And thanks for watching.